bat t-shirts, bat posters, bat sneakers, bat mania is here. And bat mania is already out of control. It's Will there be bat hysteria? Hoping for bat mania to strike at the heart. To make people go batty in Los Angeles. Bat mania this summer. <laughs> it's coming out this summer. What do you think it's going to be like? Oh, I can't wait. I love Michael Keaton. He's like, what are you? I'm Batman. If you love Batman, there's a pretty good chance that one of your favorite actors to ever play the caped crusader is Michael Keaton, who first appeared in the role in 1989. Bringing the bat out of a two-decade slumber, Keaton took movie theaters by storm with his presence on screen as the Dark Knight in the late 80s and early 90s. Now, after two decades, he's stepping back into the bat cave and giving fans something they never thought they would get. But hey, Hollywood, it's a nutty place, and we love it. Big light shots! Now you wanna get nuts? Come on! And nobody loves a nutty story like Smart Cookies Production. Join us as we take a bite out of movie history and examine how Michael Keaton found himself cast as Batman not once, but three times, and over a span of more than four decades. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to make sure you don't miss our next video. Now it's time to send up the bat signal because Smart Cookies Production has a mouthful of info about Batman that you probably don't even know. Grab a snack and sit back. It's the no guano story of Michael Keaton's Batman from Smart Cookies Production. You are? Yeah. By 1989, Hollywood was in the business of making blockbuster films, and Warner Brothers wanted to make the first live-action Batman to be produced in nearly two decades. Seeing the value in the iconic comic book character, they needed a director that could do justice to the vigilante Bat. Warner Brothers had been working with Tim Burton since his feature film debut, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, in 1985. Burton proved to be a big success for Warner Brothers, leading them to pair himself and screenwriter Sam Hamm to come up with a script for Batman. While willing to pay for the development of a script for Batman, Warner Brothers was not yet ready to greenlight the entire project. They wanted Burton to direct another film before considering making any further decisions. Initially, Burton was not all that impressed with the projects he was presented. Seeking an original, imaginative script, Burton knew he had something after finding Beetlejuice. Now it was time to cast the namesake character, and Tim had someone in mind, according to Hollywood legend. He wanted Sammy Davis Jr. to play the part. Other actors who were considered include Sam Kinison and Dudley Moore. When a producer suggested Michael Keaton, he was not even familiar with his work. But after Burton reviewed some of Keaton's performances, he was easily convinced that he had found Beetlejuice. With this decision, Tim Burton begins his working relationship with Michael Keaton. To think that it was even remotely possible for anyone else to have played Beetlejuice seems unthinkable. Honestly, the movie would have been dead on arrival, if not for Keaton's iconic performance. And Tim Burton really knew how to pick him. Boy, do you know how to pick him. Let me ask you something. Is this relationship really solid? Do I have a shot at her at all? Beetlejuice gave Warner Brothers the blockbuster film needed for them to greenlight the Batman script that Burton had been working on proving that he was a bankable commodity they could count on, gave them the confidence to bless Burton to bring back the bat. And there was no shortage of actors in the running for the part. Warner Brothers put the pressure on Burton to cast a proven action star for the leading role. Names up for consideration included Mel Gibson, Kevin Costner, Charlie Sheen, Tom Selleck, Bill Murray, Harrison Ford, Dennis Quaid, even Pierce Brosnan was considered for the part. Tim Burton shortly contemplated at that time unknown actor William Defoe for the part, but it was ultimately producer John Peters who suggested Michael Keaton play Batman after watching his performance in the film Clean and Sober. 
This 1988 film was Keaton's first true dramatic performance. It was a huge change of pace for the actor. Keaton played a real estate agent battling substance issues in the film. It was a gritty story. The script took on dark issues that were far from comfortable, allowing Keaton to show his ability to adapt his acting style to fit the part. Tim Burton's decision was made. He would cast Michael Keaton as Batman in the upcoming film. This was not a popular choice by any means. From studio executives to comic book fans, there was an enormous pushback against his decision. But Tim Burton knew he had the right actor, ignoring the enormous backlash and moving forward. Warner Brothers apparently received more than 50,000 letters from angry fans, many of whom were terrified with the prospect of yet another goofy Batman movie. To combat these fears, the studio brought on Batman co-creator Bob Kane in hopes of showing fans just how serious they were about getting this live-action Batman done right. That's why there was a controversy when actor Michael Keaton, who had previously worked with Burton in the film Beetlejuice, was cast to play Batman. But Burton had his reasons. Now, I had seen lots of actors who would fit probably the more physical image of Batman, but I just always had trouble, when I imagined them, putting on a bat suit. And uh, Michael, you know, I just look at Michael and I could, you know, enough said, really, you know, I could see him putting on a bat suit. Warner Brothers had their director, script, and a Batman. It was time to start filming near the end of 1988. Initially, the plan was to film on the Warner Brothers back lot in Burbank, California. But due to all the press attention surrounding the project, the decision was made to move the production across the pond, settling on Pinewood Studios in England. Attempting to control leaks from the film set did prove to be difficult, with media outlets clamoring to be the first to show the new heroes and villains of Burton's Gotham. The sets were impressive and numerous to create Tim Burton's vision of what Gotham should be. Using 18 sound stages, including a 51-acre backlot at Pinewood Studios to create The Dark Knight's Domain. Burton's vision was becoming a reality, and Michael Keaton was transforming into the bat. In this interview from 1989, he explains the process. The other thing about it that is so intriguing, the Batman costume. Yeah. But that looks like a real torture chamber. That was the idea, I think. <laughs> no, the idea of it basically was uh, armor, and I think what's nice about the whole concept of that is uh, it shows that Batman is intelligent. To he's smart enough to see he has no um, superpowers. He's a human being, so the man designs things to make his life work better. Everything from the boomerang gun, or uh, yeah, the batarang to I don't know to uh, the harpoon pistol and his car, you know, which is a, sets him apart from, I think, from most other uh, comic book heroes or larger than life heroes. How many pieces? are in the costume. I give you, I don't know how many pieces there are in it, but different uh, materials. <laughs> there's a uh, metal, a couple metal plates, some bolts, uh, so there's metal, rubber, it's whatever connects the rubber piece together, like a latex or something, or a spandex or whatever it is. Uh, leather, Velcro, uh, there's probably wood in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's all kinds of... Uh, how do you get into it? Well, I sit down and I think about a real... Oh, you mean physically? I, um, I was zipped into the back of it and then bolted into the front because the cape comes around and has to fit, had to fit a certain way. Otherwise, it became lopsided, and so that had to be bolted into the, the, the chest, which was covered by the plate. And the guy who did it was, was very ingenious, Bob Ringwood. And then the mask is separate... Uh, the mask, yes, was glued down now that I think about it. Oof, that was awful. That came on over your head. You had to stretch into that, fill it out, get it in the right place, and they would glue it down. Um, so every day I was glued into it, and then at the end of the day, <laughs> and I'm glued out of it. Then trying to act in that, just move there's around. A whole, there's a whole other ball game. Move around. First of all, just trying to move around, then trying to act in it. <laughs> Usually came in that order. <laughs> Let me see if I can actually move, and then I'll think about acting. And then it's got to be 
hot in there under that the hot. It's all those things. That, but but what happens is there's a movie to be made, really. You know, and even though I would occasionally complain about it, um, you you uh, what are you going to do? At some point, you've got to get on with it, and that's what you got to get on with it. And then I found ways to get out. You know, through the shoot, I figured out little tricks where I could go off in the corner and take the top off and put the top back on. When it came to the acting, Michael Keaton used some interesting techniques to make sure that Bruce Wayne was able to keep his darkest secret, protecting the billionaire playboy and his alter ego. One of the first scenes in which Keaton was faced with the challenge of hiding his alter ego happens when Bruce Wayne and Vicki Vale have dinner at Wayne Manor. To make sure that Vicky would remain none the wiser, Keaton used a higher tone for his voice when portraying Bruce Wayne. He also pulled from his comedy acting experience to make the character seem far too carefree to possibly be the winged vigilante Vicky was looking for. The use of a lower vocal tone to separate Batman and Bruce originated with Michael Keaton, inspiring other actors to follow his lead in their appearances as the Caped Crusader. Production continued for the film until February 14, 1989, wrapping up on Valentine's Day. The red carpets rolled out June 19th of the same year when Batman made its Hollywood premiere, bringing out the who's who list of stars no one knew what to expect. All the hype and a budget reportedly in excess of $40 million, Batman finally got off the ground last night, and the excess continued as a crush of fans and lines of stars were on hand for a Gotham-sized premiere. It wasn't Gotham City, but everyone in town turned out to see one of the most eagerly awaited films of the year. Batman brought out Bat Maniacs and celebrities at its Los Angeles premiere. <laughs> Nice outfit. Wait till they get a load of me. I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm at the Academy Awards. It's incredible. I'm just excited away. about the whole thing. I am a Batman fan. Biff, bam, biffy, sow. Star Michael Keaton wasn't talking as he walked in, neither was Jack Nicholson, who arrived after the film had started. But their performances as Batman and the Joker got rave reviews afterwards, especially from those fans lucky enough to get one of the free 1,000 seats at the premiere. It was a fantastic movie, and Jack Nicholson was great. I've loved Batman for a zillion years. I was worried that with all the publicity, people were, you know, it might not live up to it. It, it surpasses it. This is great. And the stars were just as enthusiastic. It's powerful, it's mythic, it's big and, and psychologically complex and entertaining. Jack Nicholson, just brilliant, completely out of his mind. It's truly unbelievable. I mean, Michael Keaton is as good as it gets. Jack Nicholson, there is no one else to play the show. It is unbelievable. Batman opens in theaters nationwide on Friday, and by the looks of things, if you start lining up now, you might get in to see it the first couple of days. Warner Brothers had a true blockbuster film on their hands. 1989's Batman ended up grossing over $400 million, making it the fifth highest grossing film at that time. And beyond its monetary success, the film was critically acclaimed. Fans got their first look at a serious Batman, despite their fears about Michael Keaton playing the bat, his serious portrayal of the comic book hero won the majority of them over. They were now in his corner. The film's success made it no surprise that Warner Brothers began working on the process of creating a sequel before the end of 1989. Initially, Tim Burton was reluctant to commit to the project, deciding to direct to Edward Scissorhands for 20th Century Fox, but he did eventually cave in and agree to the sequel with Warner Brothers, announcing that he was on board January of 1991. Now they needed to secure Michael Keaton to reprise his role as Batman. Warner Brothers had paid him $5 million for his first performance as the Caped Crusader, and they offered to double it for his second. 
Keaton agreed. He was soon back in the Batcave as filming began September 3rd, 1991. Choosing to move production of this film back to the United States per Tim Burton's request, saying he felt the first Batman had suffered from the American actor showing what he called a British subtext. Warner Brothers agreed to Burton's demand and made sure to give him ample creative space. When we first started thinking about Michael for this, I mean, for me, it clicked very clearly is, is that he's got this wildness in his eyes that makes you think he'd put on a bat suit and would be weird enough to uh, to go out at night and do this sort of thing. Batman would have a slightly different appearance for this film. Things change. One of the things that's changed in Batman Returns is the bat suit. At a cost of $100,000, alterations included, the new suit is sleeker and more flexible. Lasers were used to make it fit Keaton like a second skin. How do you go to the bathroom when you're wearing that bat suit? I'll never tell anybody how I do it. Never tell anybody how I do it. You'll see some scenes during the movie. I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> people, oh, people don't. I'm not going to tell you which ones they are, but I'm actually going to the bathroom. So that look of existential that. angst on well, Batman's face leave is actually... To you. And like I say, you use it. You use these moments. With a fresh new look came a far more grown-up script for Batman Returns. This time around, Batman's love interest would be far more of a bad girl. The new film features some major fireworks. The sexual sparks that fly between Bat and Cat get downright kinky. Most fans and critics agree that Keaton did an excellent job as Batman once again with most of the complaints being that his talents were underutilized by the script. When the film released June 16th of 1992, audiences still lined up for another look at The Dark Knight. Batman Returns went on to gross nearly $270 million, but that did fall far short of the previous Batman's $411.6 million take. Some blame the lower box office numbers on the darker elements of the story. Others on the more adult themes, possibly keeping families at home rather than in the theater. Some conservative organizations did organize campaigns and protest against companies like McDonald's for doing brand deals with the film and promoting it to children. How much did this actually hurt the box office? It's hard to say. One thing was for sure, Michael Keaton was now more than a movie star. He was a superhero in the eyes of millions, a walking, talking, living, breathing Batman among us. People could not get enough. From tabloids to newspapers, Keaton could not hide from the spotlight. Right now, that face is all over the place. With the avalanche of Batman publicity underway, Keaton is suddenly under the sort of scrutiny he hates. In this age of the celebrity confessional, Keaton has no interest in airing his dirty laundry for the public and no respect for those who do. It never ceases to amaze me what people not only are willing to do and say, but they want to do and say, things they want to talk about. And, and now it's Playing be... such an iconic character that so many people love must have been an incredibly heavy load for Keaton to carry. Known for craving privacy, many fans speculated that he turned down the role of Batman in the next film in the series to step back just a little. That's right, Val Kilmer did not take the role from Michael Keaton. It was only his after Keaton turned it down. It would take years for fans to hear his actual reasoning. The director who, was, who directed the third one, I said, I just can't do it. You know, one of the reasons I couldn't do was he asked, you know, he's a nice enough man, you know, he's passed away. So, you know, I wouldn't speak ill of him even mm -hmm. if he were alive, but I'm not speaking ill of him here. He, he, at one point, after more than a couple of meetings where I kept trying to rationalize doing it and hopefully kind of talking him into saying, I think we don't want to go in this direction. Mm -hmm. Really, I think we ought to go in this direction and he wasn't going to budge. But I remember one of the things I walked away going, oh boy, I can't do this or he asked me he said i don't understand why everything has to be so so dark and everything's so sad and i went wait a minute 
do you know how this guy got to be Batman? <laughs> Joel <laughs> Schumacher had such a different vision from that of Tim Burton that Keaton knew the next film was going to be very different, choosing to walk away due to creative differences, feeling that this happier version of Batman simply did not fit. From the criticism that Batman Forever has since received, Keaton was probably right to jump ship. The movie made Warner Brothers money, no doubt, breaking Jurassic Park's record for an opening box office weekend of more than $52 million. But not everything is about money, and sometimes art is hard to put a price on. It looked like Michael Keaton would never play Batman again. For more than 30 years, fans watched different actors play the part, but few lived up to Michael Keaton's iconic Dark Knight. So when it was announced that he would be playing Batman again in the 2023 film The Flash, fans went nuts. No one saw this coming after all these years, but when it comes to superheroes, it's often hard to see what's next. This time, Keaton's Batman will stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ben Affleck's Caped Crusader. How will fans respond to Keaton's performance? We'll have to wait and see as The Flash releases later this year. I'm Batman. Who is your favorite actor to play Batman? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a Smart Cookies production. Thanks for watching. Well, then I guess we can end right there. <laughs> no.